Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're making a cheese called Domiati. So this is an Egyptian cheese and it hails from, well, originally from the city, the port city of Damietta, which is uh, uh, on the Mediterranean coast. So it is a, what's known as a pickled cheese. Now, this is a lot different than feta, which is also a pickled style cheese, because you don't add the salt as so much to the brine, you add the salt to the milk when you actually make the cheese. Very interesting. And it can be eaten straight away or can be stored in a whey brine like this one I've got here for up to six months, I'm told, by the interwebs. Anyhow, let me show you how I made Domiati. So I'm using buffalo milk and cow's milk for this cheese. Don't forget to sanitize all of your equipment and lay it out on a clean tea towel. I'm using these rectangle shaped baskets and you can find the link for these in the description below. They are perfect for this cheese. I've set up my sink with my precision cooker to heat the milk. Now the ingredients for Domiati are two liters or two quarts of cow's milk pasteurized unhomogenized I'm using two liters or two quarts of water buffalo milk it's also been pasteurized and unhomogenized two thirds of a cup or 192 grams of coarse salt that's non iodized one eighth of a teaspoon of mo92 thermophilic culture or alpine culture one eighth of a teaspoon or 0.75 milliliters of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non chlorinated water one eighth of a teaspoon or 0.75 milliliters of single strength liquid rennet. I'm using IMCU 200, diluted in quarter of a cup of non chlorinated water. And a whey brine solution, one third of a cup or 96 grams of salt to one liter of whey. Now heat your milk to 38 degrees Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit. And I'm filling up the sink with water to create the water bath. So once the milk is at temperature, just checking it here. There we go, 38, just a little bit over, but that's okay. So now we're going to add the salt. So it's two thirds of a cup. And we're gonna stir that in and dissolve it into the milk. This is where it differs greatly from feta. So stir the salt in until you can't feel any more coarse granules on the bottom of the pot. There you go, it didn't take long. Now we're going to add the starter culture. So sprinkle that over the surface of the milk. There we go. And put the lid on top. And we're going to allow the culture to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, take the lid off, give it a little bit of a stir, stir in the culture. Now we're going to add the calcium chloride and then give that a quick stir as well. And now we're going to add the rennet solution. Now don't stir the rennet for any more than one minute. So pop the lid back on and we're going to allow the curds to set for two hours. This will also help acidify the milk as well as set the curd. So now we're going to check for a clean break. And after two hours, you would expect a good one. There it is, lovely. I'm gonna cut the curds into 1.25 centimeter or half inch cubes. I'm using the curd harp there for the horizontals and the curd knife for the verticals. Nice cutting. 
Rightio, pop the lid on top. We're going to allow the curds to heal for five minutes. And after five minutes, you'll see a little bit of whey on top. We're going to stir the curds for 15 minutes. Now remember to keep the temperature of the curds at 38 Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit using your water bath. So you can see there that the curds have shrunk a fair bit. Now we're going to remove the heat, just put the lid on so I don't make any splashes into the curds and whey. So taking the water out of the sink, removing the precision cooker. So transfer the curds into a cheesecloth lined rectangle basket using a ladle. Now you can see there that I've got a pot underneath a drainer and I've got the basket on top. So use the ladle and don't forget to reserve the whey and we're going to use that for storage of the cheese. Now it drains quite well. Uh, there are no issues with the drainage or having to wait for a really long time. There you go, it's draining freely through the cloth. So I allowed mine to drain for 30 minutes. And you can see there that it shrunk away from the the cloth. So just let it give it a bit of a jiggle and you'll see the curds come away from the cloth there only slightly stuck on there makes it a bit easier for the next step so I'm just moving that to the draining area and just grabbing all the cheese cloth just pull the cheese out of the basket and then turn the cheese over very gently gently removing it from the cloth there. Turn it over in the cloth and then pop it back into the basket and just give it a firm press down. Fold the cheesecloth over the top and then place another second basket on top and to that I'm going to add into a milk carton one litre of water which equals a kilogram. I'm going to press for 12 hours or overnight at one kilogram or two pounds. So about every four hours, uh, because this was the middle of the day for me, I just turned the cheese over. I found it was firm enough now that I could remove it from the cloth and just put it directly into the basket so that the cheese would get a nice pattern on it from the woven parts of the basket. So another four hours, just turned it over, took the cloth off the top just turned it over, it's a bit of a brick now. Just put the cheesecloth back over the top, put the basket on top and then put the weight on top. So the next morning I made up the brine by putting one litre or one quart of the, of the whey into a jug and then poured in the one third of a cup or 96 grams of the salt and then stirred it until it was dissolved. So this whey is just used for storage. Remember the cheese is already salted. We put the salt into the milk at the start of the process. So just pour the whey brine into the storage container. Get as much salt as you can out of the jug. So remove the cheese from the basket. It's a nice little brick slab there. I'm just putting on a mat there for a photo opportunity. There you go, doesn't that look lovely? Nice, well-formed cheese. I love the shape of the lines on the cheese as well. So place the cheese in the brine for storage in the kitchen fridge. I'm just putting a mat over the top. Helps it to uh, just push it under the brine a little bit there. Anyway, back to Gav for final commentary and a taste test. So that was one of the simplest cheeses that I've made for quite a while. 
It's not similar to any cheese I've made before. I think there was another cheese. I'm not quite sure what it was, but I added salt to the milk before I started. Uh, and that was also a fresh cheese. So let me just have a look. This has been sitting in the kitchen fridge now for a day uh, in its way. And I'll just remove the little follower thing. I didn't add anything to this way except for salt because I thought it might have enough calcium uh, left in the whey instead of having to add calcium chloride. Uh, the rind is very solid and it hasn't started to ooze into the whey and I don't think it will because there's enough uh, acidity in the whey. I left the whey sitting overnight just at room temperature so it'll come up in a bit of, a bit of acidity. Uh, and also there's enough calcium in the whey that the cheese won't start to dissolve into the brine, which happens when there's not enough calcium and the acidity is not matched properly. Anyway, I'll just pop it on the plate. Right, so we can cut it up and serve it. Uh, it's a lovely looking cheese. Uh, it's a big rectangle shape. And I use specific rectangle baskets because in all the photos that I've seen on the internet, that's the shape it's in. So. That's the shape I created, which is fantastic. I'm happy with that. Let's cut into a bit. Very easy. It's a fresh cheese nonetheless. So let's just, so it's now on the chopping board and you can see it there. Uh, fairly loose structure because it wasn't pressed. It's just under its own weight, uh, bar a kilogram that I put on top just overnight. Uh, so I could help it form its shape and it didn't lose any milk fat or anything like that So cuts very easily uh, I dare say over time this would get fairly salty being in the brine and stored for so long But it's only been a day for mine. So I've got some nice cubes there I've got some little cherry tomatoes just to serve it with Let's put them on the plate Make that look nice And I've been told that you use salt and pepper uh, over the cheese as well, even though it's quite salty. Probably just the pepper, actually. We'll do that, shall we? I think that's enough tomatoes to serve it with. I have seen it made where it's put in layers, massive, big uh, rectangle uh, moulds, and they uh, sprinkle in um, uh, capsicums or uh, bell peppers, sliced uh, red, uh, yellow and green and that's into into um, spread through the cheese the curds itself and then when it's uh, then you eat that one fresh so very similar I will put some pepper on top grab a fork uh, I dare say it'll probably go fairly well with uh, a little bit of balsamic vinegar over the top as well, but I don't have any handy. No, no, I don't. All right, let's try it. Mmm. Mmm. That is delicious. A delicious fresh cheese. Now I know what all the Egyptians are on about. Mmm. Put a bit of tomato too. Mmm. That is so good. I could eat a whole plate of this. And I probably will. <laughs> Absolutely spectacular. Great cheese. And so simple to make. Why wouldn't you give it a go? So I'm going to store that back in its brine, put it back in the kitchen fridge, and it can just stay there until we demolish it. So absolutely perfect way to keep this pickled cheese, uh, Domiati, nice and fresh and ready to eat. Um, don't forget to turn it every few days, um, or you may get some mold growth where it's uh, popping out of the brine. But with the brining container that I'm using, 
I've just got the mat placed on it upside down and it seems to hold the cheese down under the brine. So uh, there's a tip. Uh, and yeah, let's do that now. So one, I'm using one litre, uh, which is about one quart, and that seems to cover the entire cheese without too much excess um, being left over. So yeah, just in a normal plastic container, and I've got a ripening mat just put on top of that. I encourage you to make Domiati. It's a great cheese. Perfect saltiness at this stage anyway. And like I said, it's only been in the brine about 12 hours, roughly, not even a day. But the saltiness comes from the curd, from all that extra salt that you add to the milk at the start of the process. It is popular throughout Egypt uh, and the Middle East, and it is a delightful cheese to make. So this one was made with 50% buffalo milk and 50% cow's milk, and I'm told that is uh, exactly the milk that they use uh, in the commercial production of Domiati. So that's why it probably tastes so creamy and, well, the freshness is just amazing. It's just really delightful little cheese. Anyway, if you want to get the ingredients to make this cheese and the baskets, then pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I will see you next time.